how I gained over 20 pounds of muscle. One day I looked in the mirror, I stepped in the scale, and I said, I'm tired of this, bro. I hated being skinny. I hated the way I looked in my clothes. In the last two years, I drastically changed my physique to the point where I'm walking on the street two days ago after hitting the workout, and there's these three kids across the street. Yo, bro, you're jacked. Yo, man, are you bulk or are you cut? It's like 10 questions at once, and they had that childlike curiosity, that innocence my little self had when I was a little kid, right? The 11-year-old says, hey, bro, am I fat for my age? I'm like, shoot. In that moment, I realized it. I became the person I always needed to be inspired by because where I grew up, bro, nobody tracked their macros. And that leads me straight into the first tenet of your 10.0 physique. You must fuel your workouts with one, high protein, and two, a whole food lifestyle. For me, I eat a pound of meat a day. I eat about six eggs in a day or 10 egg whites. And I optimize my diet for clean energy, strength, and muscle building. If you vary your inputs, you will vary your outputs. I eat the same foods every single day. That changed my life. I want you to view this eating journey like you're putting the best fuel in your Ferrari. And that's the goal. Treat your body like a car that you gotta drive for the next 70 years. Whole foods have been processed or refined as little as possible. Food is comprised of more than just macros, more than just proteins, fats, carbs. Inside of these Macros, there's micros. What are micros? It's all the micronutrients that are needed. There was a review that was found in a study by Morton in 2020 that said it's best to eat a variety of protein sources from a variety of micronutrients. The truth is there's many low fat, high protein sources of protein. For me, I eat eggs. I eat 99%, 1% ground turkey. For a while I was doing venison. Okay, then you do chicken tenderloins, which are the lowest in fat. Then you do some cod, then you do sirloin steak, right? All these different options that are still high protein, still low fat, but you wanna aim for at least four different types of protein in your day. That's very simple to do. Egg whites, turkey breasts, make sure it's 1% fat. Then you can do chicken, Greek yogurt. Once I found my meals, I just repeat them. The next thing they found in this study is that whole foods made clients more satisfied, satiated than just drinking a protein shake. Right, so a protein shake, you digest it quick and you're hungry again right after. If you eat a lot of whole foods, a lot of veggies, you can eat all the veggies you want, bro, okay? And you can make them taste good to where you still enjoy your life. If you eat a lot of those, it fills your belly up, whole foods, but not really a protein shake. Now, I want you to hit your macros whatever way you're comfortable doing. So it's really at the end of the day up to client adherence, meaning what are you gonna eat, bro? So. Eating just straight whole foods might be harder for some people because it's a lot of solid food. If you don't have much of an appetite, maybe a shake is better for you, okay? Overall, the study in men's health, they studied 25 muscle building foods. You know what they put at number one? I wanna know if you can comment below this video if you knew what it was. It's eggs. They said the best muscle building food to eat is whole eggs. So due to the large amounts of amino acid leucine, which is essential for post-exercise muscle recovery, they found that whole eggs in particular are considered to be something of a protein synthesis powerhouse. So what is protein synthesis? Bro, it's just the food you eat being converted into gains. Now, in fact, eating whole eggs after a workout elicits 40% greater muscle building response than just the egg white, okay? So if you can get a couple whole, whole eggs in there while still hitting your proteins, fats, and carbs, really it's your fats that we're referring to here, then do that right after your workout. If you do intermittent fasting, make sure your first meal of the day is the most nutrient dense. The body is ready to take in whatever you give it. And if you just feed it a bunch of processed oats or processed powdered protein powder, PB Fit, all these things, it's cool, but how are you gonna build a massive physique if you're just eating protein powder first thing in the day? Last thing is stop being vegan. I was on a low protein, high carb, and high fat soy boy diet for five years. I was a straight Jeffrey, okay? Straight up Jeffrey for five years, and I cured myself of it by learning about macros, micros, nutrition, fitness, how to get lean, how to get muscular while staying lean. And I had puffiness in my face from all the carbs I was eating, and I was skinny fat. All that being vegan did for me was get me nowhere but deficient in HDL, good cholesterol, and vitamin D. My vitamin D, we're gonna get to this in a minute, was extremely low. My testosterone was extremely low. I'll put the 
blood test results on the screen. Hopefully I can show those. And a lot of people train hard, but they don't see progress. And that's because they're only focusing on one phase and neglecting their nutrition and recovery. And when you dominate all three, that's gonna get you your 10.0 self. Don't just focus on the training. I remember when I was 17 years old, I was eating a diet of ramen, frozen pizzas, and school lunch, like chocolate milks at school. And it was no wonder, my calorie intake was probably like a thousand calories a day. So I didn't put on any size. And I had a quote that I gave to my friend, my friend Dakota and I did a, our second fitness journey now. And we were fueled by this one quote. We thought to ourselves, bro, what if we ate correctly during our last fitness journey? How big would we have been in high school? Because we trained, we trained. Training was not our deficit. And the quote was this, we are not undertrained. We are just undernourished. The fact is, as a barber, as a whatever entrepreneur, most of the time, we're not focused on getting the right foods in. We're going hard at life externally, but we ain't putting the right things in. So you're probably undernourished if you're watching this video. That's a mic drop. You're not undertrained, you're undernourished. So after this epiphany, I started to eat four to 5,000 calories a day. I started going crazy on the, the, I was eating a pound of meat, but I was also eating pastas and I was taking mass gainer shakes and tons of peanut butter, anything I could do to gain. And this led to another mental health disorder. Just like I talked about in the beginning of this video, I found the other edge of the spectrum where now, instead of being skinny, now I became skinny fat and I formed a circular face. I'll try to find a photo to put on the screen of where like my cheeks got puffy because I was carrying so much inflammation in my face and it really affected my looks and it affected my confidence. And I don't give average common tips or advice in this coaching program on any of my speaking content. Why? Because the truth is when I dirty bulked, I couldn't get my cravings and impulses in order. I couldn't get it under control. I had no impulse control. Dirty bulking came from a suboptimal and really just a poor mental health at the time. Like that's why I was bulking. I was trying to prove to the world that I'm this big guy. So I was like, I gotta do it as fast as I can. Let me eat 5,000 calories a day and that'll show them. <laughs> it didn't show them shit. It just showed me that I looked fat after about three months of eating like that, bro. My face was like a balloon. And I had the worst mental well being of my life. And my advice is to eat good, healthy, unprocessed food. It's a fail proof system. If you look at the ingredients, of everything you eat before eating it for now on. If you take anything from the first principle in this video, it is high protein, whole food diet. I look at the ingredients every time I put something in my mouth. The most disrespectful thing you could do to the people around you is not be in the best physical shape, okay? It shows up, we all see it, <laughs> it's, it's no hiding it. The good thing about whole foods is when you take a potato, there's no list of ingredients on the potato. Why? Because there's only one. When you take elk or venison or chicken breast or bison, you know the one ingredient in each of those things? When you take a pound of bison, it's just bison, okay? Veggies, you take a carrot, what's the one ingredient in that carrot, bro? When you take rice, a grain of rice, what's the one ingredient? It's just that thing. So that's the good thing about whole foods. Egg whites is just egg whites. An egg is just an egg. Okay, do you understand? That's what whole foods are. They have one ingredient. If you open up a box of cereal, you'll read a list of xanthan gum, cutarlosis, screwlosis, grossis. You'll read all these ex gross, dextrose, textrose. Fuck, there's so many ingredients on the, most of the stuff you eat, the pancakes you eat, the, the whatever, bro all that shit you guys are eating. And if you go to a restaurant, Lord knows what's in it. They make that food taste so good because they want you to come back. It's loaded with sugar, salt, and fat, bars. So the ingredients really matter. And that's why we get foods with one ingredient. And my ideal goal, when you think about this fitness journey as a whole, with the food that you're eating, your ideal goal is just gain as much muscle as possible while keeping the fat as low as possible so that in a perfect world, you just put on size, 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 and it's all muscle and you still have abs, 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 abs. Most people's metabolism isn't like mine. I do a lot of things that it's gonna be hard for you guys to replicate. I understand, but that's why I'm gonna help you with this video 
to see that you can still gain as much muscle as possible with as little fat gain as possible. And we call this a maintenance, meaning take your body weight. Here's a tip for you. Take your body weight, multiply it by 15. I weigh 200 pounds. You multiply 200 pounds by 15. Do the math, 3,000. That's my maintenance calories. If you weigh 150, multiply that by 15. It's gonna be like 2,500. Cool. Now you know what your maintenance is. That means if you eat that much and you burn that much, you'll stay the same. If you decide I'm gonna do a calorie surplus by this many, this many, this many, okay, you're gonna monitor your progress, post your photos in the group weekly, and I'll help you shift it accordingly. Okay, if you're doing a deficit, then we'll do the opposite, and you'll be dropping weight. You're either bulking or cutting, the only two. Those kids ask me, are you cut or are you bulk? <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean am I cut? Like, as if it was a result. You're either on one phase or the other. Usually takes me a few months of each. And for me, I'm always gonna be in a lean bulking stage because I'm an ectomorph, they call it, a hard gainer, someone who's skinny and can have a very high protein synthesis, very high metabolism. So I'm always burning. I'm never really gonna be fat. It's not fun to lean bulk. It's really actually where you gotta be the most strict on your calories. You gotta really not have cheat meals. And then you can enjoy the fruits of never having to exactly cut you just do a slight, slight, slight calorie surplus. Now, dirty bulking is for people with eating disorders or people who are unaware that they have subpar, suboptimal mental health, okay? I needed a basic understanding of these three things, protein, fats, and carbs. That's what this first principle is all about. If you understand this, it'll go so far. You will stop passing on the ignorance to the people around you and thinking that it's somehow okay to operate as less when you know you could be more off some simple food choices. Follow these simple principles, high protein, whole foods, check the ingredients before you put something in your mouth and stop disrespecting the vessel that God gave us. Over consuming on food is the most disrespectful thing you could possibly do. I'll see you guys in the next module where I'm gonna cover the next principles in your fitness journey. This first one, bro, is so important. If you neglect this, you're screwed. You're gonna show up on camera and try to sell any product, and we all can sense that you're not confident in yourself, bro. Just like I was when I was skinny, just like I was when I had the balloon face, I couldn't go on camera and be confident. I couldn't shake hands and be confident. Why? Because we're not vibrating. I'm not attractive. Like, in the age of attention, you're trying to gain attention on social media? and yet you're not happy with yourself. So what does the audience feel? The same thing, they don't, they don't like you just like you don't like you. Let's go. Fix your diet, bro. Fix your diet. Great work, Spartan. Now you've covered what to eat. Now I'm gonna show you how to eat, or should I say how much to eat? And I got my lucky, trusty food scale here. Principle number two, the second tenet of your fitness journey taking you from a Jeffrey, who's either skinny fat, skinny, overweight, etc., underdeveloped, not self-actualized, to very well on your way to your best self. The main thing you're gonna need now is how to track your food. You're gonna need two scales. One, for this 3D physical body you've been blessed with, that you've been neglecting up to this point, and two, the food that you're gonna be putting in your mouth every day you're now gonna track it. So I'm not exaggerating when I say that weighing my food has literally changed my life. I firmly believe that not weighing your food is a guaranteed way to become what Napoleon Hill calls in his book, Think and Grow Rich, what Napoleon Hill calls a drifter, someone who is empty of purpose, empty of self-determination, someone who hasn't taken control of their own life not knowing the exact result of the food that you're eating on a daily basis. What's more irresponsible than that? And you wanna call yourself a leader. You wanna call yourself a G, and you don't know what you're putting in your mouth. I understand maybe if you look like a superhero and you can still eat whatever, fine, bro. But not you. Look in the mirror, dog. You don't look like a superhero at all. And, and you have the audacity to not track how much food you eat, what you eat. The macros specifically, not anymore, bro. Not in your one life, not in your one life. Let's get this shit together, bro. 
Not knowing the food you eat on a daily basis is extremely irresponsible because you're passing on a result that you didn't want to people who don't want it either. Why were my grandparents so overweight? Because their parents were. Why were my parents not fit? Because their parents were. Who's gonna break the cycle? You gotta break the cycle. I'm making this video for that little kid that asked me if he was overweight at 11 years old. He knows. I once saw a video of Keto King. You guys know Brandon Carter. And he was like, yo man, I bring my food scale to all the restaurants. For the last 10 years, I weighed everything I ate. You could ask me, what did I eat on this date? And I could tell how much I ate and how much I burned. He's a G. And he said, I was able to look the way I look natural. Is I keep this on me at all times. How many people you know who weigh everything they eat, tracking it in my fitness pal? You give me any day over the last 10, 15 years, I'll tell you exactly what I ate, how many calories it was, how many macros, and how many calories I burnt that day. If you do that for a decade, you're gonna get results that are above average. If you're consistent and you show up and like overdo it, don't just do this shit, like overdo it for a decade or two, <laughs> it'll come a point where you'll get results that people won't be able to fathom and they'll have to. To say it can't be done it becomes like a habit and i don't know what it's like to just eat food without tracking it so it doesn't even seem like a burden to me it's like br brushing your teeth I'm like oh man you gotta brush your teeth every day twice and floss man i ain't doing all that work yeah. and it, it, it's like no it's just like that for me once you do anything for a certain amount of time yeah. it just becomes who you are the version of you who doesn't like tracking his food that's the one we're trying to get rid of right now so put your ego to the side the new version of you he understands this thing Okay, and there's a study where I read that they gave an analogy that a food scale acts as a speed bump and it reminds us, hold on bro, you just ate half of your calorie requirements in just your breakfast. You think you wanna slow down a little? Okay, cause sometimes you eat some bacon and some cream cheese bagels and think you're getting away with it like it doesn't have a thousand calories in just that alone. You eat all this cheese on your omelet and you think you're okay. After 30 seconds of practice, I finally figured out the perfect methodology on how to use this scale. I'm gonna share with you guys. You push this fucking button, okay? And then you read the numbers on a screen. Just like you do scrolling all day on your phone or when you go to McDonald's and you go to the drive-thru and you push buttons on a screen, same thing, just less dopamine, okay? We're gonna train your brain to get dopamine from building your life, not your life up okay so that's what this is about counting calories and measuring portion sizes does have a learning curve but it takes you about 30 seconds if you actually tried okay if you tell me you can't figure this thing out you have a lot bigger problems than the scale itself your brain there's something wrong with your brain if you don't know how to do this do i need to count calories. No, though, no, I'm not a fitness guy though. Like, I, I don't want to track calories. <laughs> I don't want to use the scale. I don't want to go that deep on the fitness thing. Sh Jeffrey, shut the fuck up. Pick up the scale, bro. If you want accurate numbers, I like math. When I was making 20K as a barber, I like that. I like math, you know, it's, it's income. It's good, I can track that. If I'm eating pizza every day, eating out, you don't know what's in that. You can't track it. If we can measure it, we can scale it. There's a quote about measuring and people who do guesswork, I don't relate. So most food items have labels already, which you can use as a basis for calculating, okay? But the problem is that's not enough. Usually this shit's inaccurate anyway. You take it off there, you put it on the scale and it ain't even what the package says it was. And there was studies done on that. And because of the guesswork gets you nowhere fast, that leads you to false progress. That's why on your fitness journey, you thought you were dieting correctly and months went by and you didn't gain any muscle mass or you didn't lose any body fat. Why? Because you're thinking you're in line with your goals when really you aren't. You're actually overeating or under eating and having a regular process of weighing your food and recording this information in a food journal will set you up to win. So we're gonna use the Trainerize app and if you don't already have it, download on your phone and I will give you the custom macros for your body type once you give me your three photos, 24 hours later, I will have you your exact macros that you need to now find foods for, as well as a list of foods to make sure you're eating correctly. To be very clear, bro, you gotta weigh your food. If I was in high school at 17 and I knew this, I would have been jacked. I would have been jacked as a high schooler, but I instead was eating ramen noodles, the cereals that the school lunch gives you, and like some hot dogs at lunch or whatever. And this is gonna teach you a few things. Weighing your food. This is your new best friend. It's gonna teach you one, portion control. 
So when you start weighing your food, you're going to gain an understanding of how many calories you're really consuming. Two, it's going to create a healthy eating pattern. By sticking to a certain amount of calories per day, your stomach gets accustomed to only eating that. And then soon, you'll fall into healthy eating patterns without much effort at all. Just like anything, bro, you had to put training wheels on your bike when you were a little kid. Some of you guys still need them. And then you're going to take those off and now you can ride free. That's all we're doing here. Training wheels in the beginning, understand the game. You don't got to weigh your food every single day for life after that. Okay, but Joe, can you give me some tips? Like, I'm a fitness dirty, I need some tips. All right, Jeffrey, here's some tips. Number one, measure your food in grams or ounces. So keep this in mind. One ounce, 28 grams. 28 grams equals one ounce. Sometimes your food is going to come in either of those metrics. It's up to you to use this thing between your two ears and pick and measure the two. Tip number two, the best way to get accurate data is to weigh and log your food before cooking. So raw weight is how we do our macros. Imagine weighing out a steak on a scale and then putting it in a pan and, and cooking it and all the juices and blood comes out and then it weighs less. You're gonna track those and they're two different things. So when you weigh your food after it's been cooked, there's a lot of room for discrepancies now in the numbers. Think about the raw ingredients that are cooked and then changed like a potato. You boil a potato, it absorbs all the water. Now it's gonna weigh more when you put it on the scale. So weigh stuff in its raw weight. Very simple tip, okay? Now you need two scales, one for your food and you're gonna also have one for yourself. So you weigh your food every day, you can also weigh yourself every day. Right when you wake up, right after using the restroom, jump on the scale in your boxers. If you're insane, like me, you can weigh yourself every day. But if you just wanna do one time a week, the day we do weigh-ins is every single Friday. On Friday, you're gonna take a progress photo of your front, side, and back, okay? And then you're going to post those in the trainer eyes for me to audit and be able to track your progress and decide if it's time to adjust your calories accordingly. Seven days a week, I want you to track your food and at least once a week, track your body weight. And a large part of this gap between who you are here at Jeffrey's stage and your 10.0 self, or at least close to becoming that, is competence. What is competence? It's your understanding on a subject. Right now, you don't know anything about it, and that's not good. So the same way you learn how to cut hair, the same way you learn how to use an iPhone, same way you learn how to ride a bike, you just started taking action. You just picked up the macro calendar and said, okay, how, how do I count these? That's what we're gonna do with this. And it, it's painful in the beginning, but now I can do this with my eyes closed, okay? So that's the goal. And any chance to gain competence from here to here is massive forward progress. That was your level up the whole time. That's gonna teach you a lot about how really the scale is flaky, bro. If you get on the scale day to day when you're weighing yourself, you'll realize that it's actually tracking your food every day that matters. The scale, one day it'll be up three pounds because you drank a lot of water. The next day you didn't. Maybe you, you retained a lot of water so it went up even more and you're confused like why am I gaining weight? Okay, what I need you to do is drink the same amount of water, eat the exact same foods, your body will change accordingly. Check in every single week. There should be no guesswork. If you're bulking, you should be gaining a couple pounds a month on average, if you're doing like a lean bulk responsibly, like I am. And if you're dropping fat, you could be dropping two to three pounds of fat per week. Every single week, when I did my cut, I went from 210 all the way to 180. So I dropped 30 pounds and it took me no time. It took me like 45 days. Okay, you wanna be dropping like a couple pounds of fat per week. And it's always best to tell the person that you live with who prepares the meals. If you have a partner, do not let them buy anything that's not on your foods list. I remember when I was doing my cut from 210 to 180 and I got shredded all the way down to 6% body fat. So I still have a bicep vein now, but they were literally bulging out of my skin. And I remember I had peanut butter in my cupboards. Now I recommend against this, having peanut butter or any cheap meals, anything in your cupboards when you're doing a cut, when you're dropping lower in your body fat because your mind is so weak. You have zero impulse control. You're going to tap and go in the middle of the night because you're gonna get those cravings. Right now I'm hungry. I do these videos fasted so that I can project this energy to you guys better. And you guys would tap when you're hungry. So do not have anything in your cupboards. For me, it was actually mindset training. I was training my mind to be stronger. 
to do the most with the least. So I would keep it in there just to prove to myself, yeah, I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need the peanut butter. But you guys would fold and you would have three scoops of peanut butter and that's already 16 grams, two tablespoons of peanut butter is 16 grams of fat. That's half of your fat intake for the entire day. You just self-sabotaged your entire journey by having it in your cupboards. So long story short, no peanut butter in your cabinet, no cheat meals in your cabinet, no nothing. Just get the same meals and just stop getting dopamine from what you put in your mouth. Get dopamine from progressing towards your life's purpose, okay? So nothing in the fridge or cabinets that's not on the food list. If you don't know the numbers on the scale on your meals, your macros, you will not reach your goals. I don't care if your goal isn't just to be a superhero. Joe, I don't want to look like you, bro. I don't want to get jacked. I don't want to be lean, bro. I, I like to be uh, athletic looking. Bro, no one gets jacked on accident. No one gets shredded on accident, okay? I promise you will tone it down if you start getting too good of a result. Just start tracking your food, bro. Just start tracking your food, bro. What do I gotta do to tell you? Just track your food, bro. I don't care if your goals are confidence. I don't care if your goals are internal or external. Track your food, bro. Confidence comes from competence. If you don't understand these simple metrics, guess where your confidence is lacking at? Because you know you're guessing. And a motherfucker who's guessing when he walks in the room, everybody can sense it. Universally, when a man walks in the room, you ask a thousand women, they look at all the men, they're gonna spot the one who's on his stuff across the board. You wanna be that guy. Whoa, that guy's got his stuff together. I can tell by the way he walks and talks. That guy. And when you show up on your consultation videos, when you show up on your social media, in the age of attention, on social media, we are in the age of attention and you don't like how you look, do you realize the amount of self-sabotage you are doing on your life? It's so much bigger than this thing, bro. If you don't know your macros, you won't hit your goals, internal or external. You need structure in everything you do so that you can build confidence and get an accurate assessment that actually gets you a result. Doesn't matter if you don't know your numbers because I got them for you. Just put your photos in the Trainerize app, put your height, put your weight, and upon joining the program, I'll give you your protein, fats, and carbs dialed specifically to your body type and goals. Now, I'm going to have them in a custom app. We're going to track them every day for you perfectly. You're going to have workout videos with reps, with a routine in your profile. And we're going to do this all custom to your goal, okay? We're going to get you on Zoom calls every single week for accountability and mindset. And there's no way you can fail at this unless you just don't want it at all. If you say, like, I just don't, I just want to fold and tap and stay down here less than I know I could be. That's the only way you could fail at this. There's no other choice unless you wanna be miserable and escape the truth that you're just gonna live below your potential. So I'm gonna take you there. I'm about to teach you the best shit you ever learned. You need to get a coach, okay? And now that you've found one, you need to pay him a lot of money. Why? Because accountability gets you speed. If the more you pay, the more you pay attention, and that coach gives you accountability and speed of you not having to figure this shit out on your own. And it's better to invest and believe in yourself and make a move than to hesitate and be frightened and sit there still. While everybody else is improving, you're getting left behind. Looking back in your past, you're not going that way. Turn around, we're going forward. Now, I have a free community as well. It's not free for long, but also if you guys haven't joined that, the link is in the description. And right there, we're gonna still be able to get you access to more knowledge, more competence, and speed up the gap. It would be my pleasure to help you on your fitness journey. It's so important to ensure that you're eating correctly. Fuck out working a bad diet. That never works, okay? So now that we've covered eating and food, let's get into the third tenant of your fitness and 10.0 self-creation journey. Really, we're revealing your best self. We're not creating them. It's like a big block of ice around you and we're just chipping away at all your limiting beliefs and through your habits and actions and competence, boom, boom, boom. And then there, there you are flexing in the middle of it with your family, your white picket fence, your dogs, your wife, your kids, and they're all looking at you like, wow, that's dad, boom. Okay, that's what we're creating right now. One tenant at a time. Let's get into principle number three. Spartans, ooh, ooh, ooh. What is principle number three? Aesthetic body training intensity, training like a monster and skill-based training. So cool, bro. We've covered food. Now we're gonna get into your training. This is progressive overload. The most important principle in strength training 
literally all the way back to ancient Greece by legend, is a well-proven principle of resistance training where you lift weights, but you continually add weight as you get stronger. So if you can't, for instance, do 10 reps of a pull-up and you just keep doing 10 reps of a pull-up and you maxed out at 10, let's say, you can even add more reps at the same weight. You will just get a little stronger, but you'll never actually add mass or size. Why? Well, the study shows that by adding weight, the body responds by increasing the size of the fast twitch muscle fibers in your muscles. Long story short, the heavier you can go in the gym with good form and good repetitions, your body now responds to this and says, oh, this guy just fought a bear in the wild. And like, we got to get him stronger so he can win the battle against the bear next time. Your body starts thinking you're like back in your ancestors days because our body is so incredible. This machine that will react according to your lifestyle. If you don't use it, you lose it. So when you start using it, even if you aren't eating enough food, your body will hold on to all the muscle it has if you're using the muscle every day. That's why people say, Joel, I don't want to lose my muscle. You're giving me calories that are too low. If you're training hard, intensely in the gym, that's principle tenet number three is train intense. Okay. Now next, I want to explain an aesthetic body. That's the V taper. So when you do the lat spread and you have the V upside down Dorito look, that's what you're really looking for, bro. A V shaped body is the same thing to a woman. I'm going to just give it the exact scenario that we all know is true. A woman has an hourglass, okay? Like a Coke bottle, I think is what they would refer to this as. And I mean, look at the mannequins. Even the mannequin looks good. Why? Because in our mind as men, we think that means that she's fertile. When she has the wide hips and she's voluptuous lips, okay? Boom, she could birth my children. That's basically what we think primally in our brain. And have you ever stopped to think about the female gaze? If you're a guy or if you're into that, I don't judge right? That's so how I keep my peace of mind because I don't really care what people do. I don't got to have an opinion on it. But the female gaze states that, you know, women are going to across the board, if you take a thousand girls and then you place a thousand guys and she picks, let's say you pick 10 guys, the female gaze is going to be attracted to the one with what? The Superman physique. Why? Because he looks capable. He looks like in her mind, the same way we have the primal feeling of the wide hips and the she's going to be able to birth your children. That's what wide hips symbol to men. Okay. Her, she's looking for, it's just bro, morals and ethics aside. She wants the biggest alpha male guy. That's the most able to provide and protect. And I'm taking this very like conscious topic now. And I just brought it all the way down to like the 3d, like Jeffrey level on you. But from the beginning of my fitness journey, I needed to know this, that the basis of why it's important to be big and strong, the reason why the root of my lack of self-confidence when I shook hands with men and was afraid to approach women, it's because I knew deep down I wasn't the candidate. I wasn't a viable option for either, for the strong man to be a, a brother of mine or for the woman to be a partner. I knew I was weak. I knew I was underdeveloped. And that's because my primal innate ancestors, they had to be developed and strong and capable to go, obviously they didn't lift weights and eat protein shakes, but I'm saying the V taper, it gives that same female gaze attraction, that same respect. You see a big dude when he has shoulders that are broad and a waist that is chiseled. Okay. A lot of guys are the opposite. They got big bellies or they do too much of the wrong exercises. What I want you to do now is actually stop doing anything that builds your obliques, okay? So a lot of you guys do the, the oblique exercise where you hold a weight and go side to side with it, stop. You don't know what you're doing, bro, stop, okay? Next thing I want you to stop doing is dips. You literally don't wanna do dips, why? Because that's lower chest. You don't wanna do flat bench, why? That's mid to lower chest. You absolutely don't wanna do decline bench. Why? Because that's lower chest. I don't know if you can tell, but my chest is already developed down there. You know the hardest part of your physique to build? The upper, the upper chest. So there's five aesthetic muscle groups that I focus on building, okay? That's the upper chest and the triceps. And for those, all you're gonna do is pike push-ups, okay? And you're gonna do incline bench with both 
dumbbell and with the barbell. Incline bench, that's really it. You're gonna do the flies, you're gonna do the bottom up fly, okay? And you wanna feel the contraction in your upper chest. It's extremely difficult to do this. And if you look at the masses of men, they don't have upper chests. When they wear a button up shirt and they have the top of the buttons open, that shit is non-existent, okay? So you can tell a dude knows what he's doing when he's building the upper chest and his triceps. Your tricep is like twice as big as your bicep, at least. So a lot of people think your biceps are so important when really your triceps, if you want bigger arms, bro, train your triceps. These give you, what you need is that frame to be built from the top down. So now we got the upper chest. Next thing you want is your neck and traps. A developed neck and traps makes you look from like a high schooler little kid to like a grown ass dominant masculine man. And if you look at the difference between a guy with a smaller neck and a guy with a very developed neck, you'll see even without seeing his actual physique, just by looking at his appearance with his neck alone, he looks jacked, okay? That's what we're going for. An aesthetic body, it's very important to have your delts, your lateral delts bigger. That's like my biggest thing I'm working on. But if you want to have an aesthetic physique, you really want the V taper to come in from big lats, okay? So this muscle right here, all you need to be doing is pull-ups. Lat, lat pull-downs are like level one amateur, okay? If you can do pull-ups, skip doing the lat pull-downs and get straight into your pull-ups, okay? A bigger back and bigger lats from your wide grip pull-ups and wide lat pull-downs. You wanna like superset them, you can do that, but they give you the upside down Dorito look. The next part of your aesthetic physique training is gonna be your abs. Abs are not given. If so, marathon runners would have them. Abs are a muscle that has to be built. The main focus that's underdeveloped is the lower abs. A lot of people carry body fat on their lower abs and they think that all I gotta do is eliminate the body fat and the abs will show. If you don't have anything developed down there, when you take away the body fat, what's gonna show is just a flat stomach, okay? If you want them bulging out, abs that are bulging out, you're gonna need to develop them. And the best exercise for your lower abs is the lying leg raise and the hanging leg raise, okay? No more dips, no more oblique work. No more working on your side of your abs. That's the aesthetic physique. Lastly, I want you to shock the system. I want you to push yourself harder than you've ever pushed. They asked Muhammad Ali, when you train for a fight, how many sit-ups do you do? He said, I don't count my sit-ups. I only count when it starts hurting because that's when it really counts. I want you guys to get in the gym with that Muhammad Ali mindset of when the, when the reps start hurting, I'm gonna keep the form perfect and I'm gonna really feel that pain, that intensity, because I know time under tension. My fitness trainer, I have a coach in person, does my leg days with me, and he says, time under tension is the key. Tension-based training is his Instagram. Let me shout out my guy. I'll put his Instagram handle right here, tension-based training. He's a dope coach and he really taught me a lot about not needing the most weight, but if you do the, the exercise with perfect form, boom, slow on the way down. You don't need to do near as much and you avoid injury. Thankfully, I haven't had an injury because of a guy like this teaching me how to not ego lift, basically. Now, I will also say to counter that, the exact opposite advice is that if you don't sometimes go to the gym and like say to myself, I'm gonna push so hard today, I'm gonna do extra weight today, and every set I'm gonna need a spotter, and you're probably training like a little girl. You've probably gotten comfortable if you're not fearful when you go to put the weight up. Oh shit, I don't know if I can get these reps. Yo, man. Hey, bro, take out your earbud. I'm sorry to, to interrupt you, man. You got a quick second to spot me? I'm trying to get eight reps right now. I'm gonna get eight. I just need help on the last two. Maybe the last three, just tap the elbows. You don't even gotta grab them or anything. I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna just need you to boom, 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 boom. Help me up on the last two. Thank you, bro. Boom. That's exactly how I do it. And the cool thing about lifting weights is not the weights itself. It's the cool shit you can do after. Now I can do handstand press-ups. And that's very attractive to the general public. They look at a guy who can do a handstand press-up and they're like, damn, that's cool. Because they can't do it. Anything that someone can't do, I can cut my own hair. They're like, damn, that's cool. I could never do that. There's a lot of shit I do that nobody could ever do. That's why I'm an interesting guy. You need to be able to do muscle-ups, weighted pull-ups, okay? You need to be able to box. If you're gonna do cardio, don't run around the block. That shit is whack. Ba ba ba. You know what I'm saying? Learn the speed comes from the tricep. Boom, 
Learn all that. Learn, learn the boxing a little bit. I like to spar. That is like massive cardio. Boxing cardio is way more intense than any running around the block ever will be, bro. You could do 10 minutes of boxing or run for an hour. You're going to learn a skill with one and still get the same result. Martial arts is great. Of course, jujitsu, all that. Muay Thai, even burpees, if you do them right, they look cool. Way cooler than running. So cardio. Cardio is whack. I never run on a treadmill. That's my take on training and on cardio. I really don't do cardio. I just box and I work out in a gym that doesn't have an AC. Lastly, if you aren't doing food, how to eat and what to eat coupled with the correct training, you're screwed. But you know what? The crazy thing is you could do everything listed in this video. And if you don't do this following fifth tenet of your fitness and nutrition and training and 10.0 self journey, you will get nowhere. Okay. And that last principle sleep, it's sleep and your testosterone. And of course, supplements. Now I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, but I'm going to talk about them. Let's get into it. So look, bro, principle tenant number five is sleep, testosterone and supplements. I'm going to cover this topic as quickly as I can with the best information I can. They found in research that any light that comes into your room during the night disrupts your deep sleep. REM sleep is the most important type of sleep you can get for your recovery. Why? Because not getting REM sleep negatively impacts your cognitive functions like memory, knowledge, retention, and alertness. And in this study, they found that wearing a sleep mask, which I have right here, can boost your brain function, including alertness, memory, and reaction times. Over the last few years, I built my barber business to 28,000 a month. I sacrificed a lot of sleep and I served a lot of high ticket clients at a moment's notice and it was worth it because it built me into the man I am now. But if I could go back, the one thing that wasn't ideal that I would change now is I would focus on the quality of my sleep. So when it came to sleep hygiene, that's really what it is, sleep hygiene. The same way that you have teeth hygiene, face hygiene, you also have a sleep routine that you now need to focus on. And you need to just build the easy win. So remove all the lights from your bedroom, try to get blackout curtains. If you can't get blackout curtains, just remove all the little dots that are emitting lights and then get one of these, a quality sleep mask, okay? It's gonna suck for the first few days and weeks, but in the long run, this will be worth it. Since light plays such a crucial role in your sleep wake cycle, blocking it out can promote better sleep and in turn improved cognitive function. So they found a positive relationship with wearing a sleep mask and your alertness, your ability to remember shit and <laughs> information retention, and they improved after wearing the sleep mask. So wearing a sleep mask to bed increases REM sleep, slow wave sleep, and boosts your melatonin levels by blocking out the light including ambient lights. It could be random cars going by with their lights shining through your window. You didn't even know it, but it disrupted your sleep while you were asleep. It took you out of that deep sleep into the light sleep phase. And whether it's the outdoor street lights, whatever, shining through your window. So buy one of these, the link will be below. This is an Amazon product. I bought like three of these over the years. Very simple product. I don't remember the, the brand name. M-Z-O-O is the brand name. All right. Second, I want you to get some earplugs. No studies for this, but it should be fucking simple when you hear loud noises in your sleep, that shit wakes you up. So right now I can barely hear anything. It's like those Apple uh, headphones or the bows you put over your ears that block out a lot of sound. I sleep like a baby, bro. Wow, yeah, I took them out and I could hear a lot better. Next thing is these, these are Somnifix. You can get a brand called Better Mouth Tape. It's a very simple product. It's called mouth tape, okay? You're simply gonna put this over your mouth when you sleep at night. It's going to keep you from mouth breathing. A lot of you guys mouth breathe your life away, okay? And we gotta put a stop to this. There's a hole in the middle, that's for your breathing. Boom. Mm. It improves your structure of your face. When you sleep with your mouth open all the time, it causes these muscles underneath your mouth to sag, okay? A lot of negative impacts have been found with, with mouth breathing. 
You could literally just use a piece of masking tape, bro, if you have nothing. Cover your mouth so you don't mouth breathe when you sleep. This is gonna make you overall more attractive. It's going to cause you to breathe through your nose, okay? If you snore, you wanna fix that. All you need to focus on right now is getting your blood work done so that you know your testosterone levels. I did my testosterone levels twice. The first time I did it, they were as low as a 12 year old girl or an 80 year old woman. It was terrible. It was like a couple hundred nanograms per deciliter. Did it again, it was all the way up to 700. So I massively improved it over time. How? By everything I just told you in this video. Intense training, eating the right foods, getting better sleep, okay? The cool thing about getting your blood work done is you can then compare it a year later with this experiment in mind. So you need eight hours of sleep a night. These are some of the supplements I take. You got zinc. Okay, this is 50 milligrams. You got vitamin D3, 2000 IUs. I'll take five of these in a day. They say that's too much, but I say that's too little. The man, the modern man's testosterone has been on a decline over the last years. And for a lot of reasons, there's a lot of plastic in our foods. We're glued to our devices and not getting sunlight, poor sleep, all that, you name it. Weak men in general. But this is a precursor to testosterone. My vitamin D was so low, it was like a level six on my blood test results. And as a result, my testosterone was also low. I fixed my vitamin D levels, which then fixed my testosterone. This is good for before you go to sleep. M magnesium, okay? It's gonna help you sleep better. So literally just magnesium, vitamin D, and zinc. That's it. I also take creatine. The other thing I took was five grams of creatine a day. And some BCAs are cool, intro workout. I actually don't even do that. But pistachios, here's some hacks before bed. Yo, uh, Joel, can you give me a tip? I want a, I want a shortcut. I got you, Jeffrey, here you go. All these supplements, the last thing you wanna do is eat eggs before bed, okay? If you have low testosterone, we're gonna get it up by eating eggs before bed. Those healthy fats are what are needed as the baseline bedrock of your testosterone. You're also gonna need pistachios. Pistachios have magnesium in them, okay? And I would avoid mass gain or shakes if you're gonna get whey. I would only do mass gain or shakes if you're gonna do vegan protein. Why? Because those ones I found, they only have three to five ingredients. The, the whey protein never sits well in my stomach. So I recommend you find a vegan protein that has the least amount of ingredients as possible. Okay, supplements. All these right here. I watched the movie with Bradley Cooper, Limitless, and he took the Limitless pill, and then he went home. He like charisma rizzed up his neighbor and did his thing with her, and then he came home and fixed his house up and then fixed his life up. That's what testosterone is to the modern day man. If your test is low, I need you to do everything you can in your power to fix it because it's literally the modern day Limitless pill. And that's what having high testosterone does. It makes effort pleasurable a real man likes effort and if he doesn't it's because his test is low so sun exposure daily eating whole foods training like a savage okay being courageous and by yo man i need a spot for this ah that's how you get your testosterone up and it, lastly bro i wish i didn't have to say this but not fapping before bed ever don't fap okay to increase your testosterone all these supplements once you've done that now you graduated to my last tip, which also you want your body fat to stay below 15%. If you can get your body fat at 15%, 12% body fat is the most optimal. That's when your hormone functions the best in your body. But it's not just about putting on size, okay? We want to put on lean muscle mass over time with the least amount of fat added on as possible. A proper reverse diet is how you truly put on lean mass. Now, what is a reverse diet? It's when you cut your calories all the way down till we get veins busting out of your lower abdomen. And then now it's gonna truly change your life because now when we go to build you back up again, after you've cut for weeks and days and months, unless you got a long way to go, bro. If you've been overweight for a long time, there might be a longer journey, but it's gonna be worth it. Once we cut you down to where you literally have veins busting out of your abs, okay, when you say, Joel, I can't go anymore, bro. Like I'm ready to, to reverse diet now. I can't do this cut anymore. I'm gonna try to push you a little harder, a little further. And then when you finally make that switch to reverse diet, I would change your life because now you're gonna be able to bulk on higher calories 
than you've ever seen in your life. And you're going to tell me now, yo, Joel, I can't eat this much food, man. This is too much food, bro. And I'm like, let's go a little farther. Let's add 10% more to your carbs. I can't eat this much food. All right, now we'll add 10% to your fats. Yo, bro, I can't eat this much food. All right, now we're going to cut back down again and then do that process. Then we're going to reverse diet again and bulk you back up. We're going to cut and bulk and cut and bulk until you're what? Cut and bulky. Let's go. Thank you guys for watching this video. We're going to get cut and bulky together. Just like the Ziz documentary says, we're all going to make it, bro. We're all going to make it. I'm talking to that kid I met on the street, the 11 year old kid. We're all going to make it, bro. You're going to be jacked, man. Take the advice in this video. Put your fitness goal in the comments below this video. We're all going to make it. The community is supporting each other more than ever. And I appreciate the love. I want you guys to know if you don't look good on camera and you feel that way, that's what the world is going to feel from you. However you feel is how we're going to feel. And if you don't feel good about how you look on camera, I don't care what you're saying or what you're doing because we're not attracted to you because you're not attracted to you because life is a mirror, not a window. Let's go. The link is below to join the community. Free coaching calls and modules and training. Never settle for less in life when you could choose to be more off some simple food choices, a diet, and simple competence from your old self to your new self. That same kid that needed help is in me. I know we're all the same and we all experience these traumas and these pains of not being our optimal self. But when you look at the world and you're not getting results, it's because we haven't gave enough attention to detail. We know success is in the details. And the more we do, the more we get. You can have more in life. You can have $20,000 a month as a barber when you decide to become the individual that's capable of consistently doing and giving and learning more. Then you can get more. Why? Because we attract success we don't try to go pursue it and chase it. Life's a what? It's a mirror, not a window. That concludes our fitness 10.0 mindset, fitness, nutrition, mastery, complete guide from beginner Jeffrey all the way to savage Leonidas. Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> <laughs>